Welcome back to another episode of Be Great Renee. In today's podcast, we're going to be going over how to reset ADHD symptoms. And this reset of ADHD symptoms, this was brought to me, my attention by Dr. Russell Barkley in one of his presentations on how people with ADHD have to be very careful on how they go about their day. Because if we just go, 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 go all day, the compulsiveness of ADHD and the symptoms of lack of attention will increase. And he brings our attention to the SR regulatory system. And the SR regulatory system is a fuel tank, right? So this fuel tank is basically people with ADHD have very short SR fuel tanks. So SR means self-regulatory and the fuel tank is you're basically your willpower. So People with ADHD have a very short fuse of willpower throughout the day, and he describes why this is important to make sure you incorporate the steps that I'm going to be bringing you through throughout your day so you do not lose control as far as your symptoms getting out of hand and you getting overwhelmed with ADHD. And this can apply to people who are going the route with medication or even the people who are going the route without medication has been shown to help both parties. So I just want to bring that to your attention and let's get to the notes. So anytime we do executive tasks, things like working, doing responsible things, time management and things in that nature, uh, this can actually tap out our fuel tank faster. We empty the SR fuel tank really quickly, especially for those with ADHD. If we empty this tank without filling it back up, we can increase our chances of having no self-control. We can see this in children as well, especially when they get home from school and making them do homework without allowing them to refill their fuel tank. For adults, this happens a little differently. If we try to go back to back with work or responsibilities without taking time to recharge, we can find ourselves being more anxious. We can find ourselves feeling overwhelmed with our next task, increasing our chances of being very compulsive. Some examples are snacking on junk food, rushing our work, or having an outburst of emotions. This is where you can say something that you really don't mean, and it's hard to take back. And then when you get to chill a little bit, you kind of like go throughout your day and go, wow, I shouldn't have said that. I should have never done that. Here are some executive tasks that can easily drain our tank. Number one is stress, drugs, alcohol, and illness. So the more stress that we're under throughout our day, the more that this tank gets drained out. The more drugs that we incorporate ourselves with, the more this tank gets drained out. Being sick taps out the drain, as I mean, the tank as well. And alcohol. I actually find alcohol being a huge problem with people with ADHD, and it explains why I never did well with it. Number two is time management and time management in the ways of if you're going through your day and you have meetings, nine, 10, 11, 12, and then on your lunch break, you're taking your food to your desk to do your work and eat at the same time. And then you go all day. That's going to continuously just drain you. So the goal is to try to find little slots that we can refill our fuel tank. And I have some examples in this podcast. Number three, emotional self-regulation going through a breakup or going through an argument with somebody that can really drain our fuel tank. And then number four, having no self-motivation after a while, the, you know, this is why the first step I want to do with the first podcast that I've done. And I'll link that down below. If you don't watch it, it's important that we understand why we are the way we are, because we can get really hard on ourselves. Remember, we can be having issues with procrastinating, planning for the future, doing things at the last minute. And then this right here, we just feel if we just focus on what we didn't do and we think that we're just weak minded and things of that nature, it can easily just make us have this stinking thinking, which is basically negative talk. So here are ways that we can actually refuel the SR tank. Number one, we want to make sure we have something to look forward to. Uh, Dr. Russell Barkley explains this as great rewards and positive emotions. And I look at it like, let's just say you have a long day of work. What are you doing that you can look forward to at the end of the day? What is your reward? If we don't plan something positive there, then our reward can be things like junk food and alcohol. So if we can plan something we can look forward to, that can be very helpful throughout our day. Positive emotions. So let's just say you're looking forward to something that makes you happy and it makes you feel like, yo, later I'm going to watch my favorite TV show and I'm going to chill and I'm going to kick my feet up. I'm going to relax. That's bringing like a positive emotion to you. And you're also looking forward to that reward. 
Number two is self-encouragement and positive affirmations. This is very important. The more that we can take time to look forward to things, the more that we can plan our day accordingly, and the more that we know if we do things too much back to back without having rest, the more we're going to start to become aware of that is not going to support us in our emotional our emotions or our SR fuel tank. So the more that you get tired and you had meetings that you cannot, sometimes you, you have to do what you have to do. And sometimes if you're doing something back to back to back to back and you have to do it, just remind yourself, yeah, I know I'm tired right now. Yes, I know that this is a long day, but I'm going to get through it. So this self-encouragement, just this positive reinforcement is very important. Number three, which is probably my favorite one, small breaks between tasks. If you can't do this due to working in an office, try to take like a five minute bathroom break when you can. So just leave your phone, walk to the bathroom, inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Think about what you have planned later. Think about how you're going to get through the day, right? And just take that nice little break. Another thing I like to do is when lunchtime comes, get outside a little bit. If it's raining, put a rain jacket on. If it's too cold, put a nice coat on that can keep you warm. Go move your body. Break away from the computer a little bit. Break away from the office a little bit and go let yourself recharge. Try your best to avoid texting, scrolling, making all these phone calls because you need a little break. You should, I call it turning your brain off, right? Just let your brain just chill for a little bit and let yourself just basically digest your emotions. So what do you feel right now? Why do you feel that way? What, what thoughts do you have? How can we digest that thought and make a, a solution to these things so we're not stuck with all these extra emotions that are overwhelming us? Remember, what does emotion mean? Energy and motion. The more emotions we have and the more we don't express emotions, what happens to emotions? It gets suppressed or even depressed within the nervous system. Number four, meditation and positive self-image. So try your best to wake up a little earlier to have some time to yourself. Use this alone time to envision how your day is going to go and how it's going to plan out. I want you to, when you vision these things, when something comes up negative about the day that you, you don't want to do or you're trying to avoid, try to start doing something called flipping the coin. Look at the positive and everything rather than allowing yourself to feel overwhelmed because the brain is tricky. The more we let our brain think about how much we don't want to do something, the brain will support that and the body will respond. Oh, we shouldn't get up. I don't want to go. We shouldn't do this one thing. So you got to be very careful with the brain. I find it very helpful of waking up earlier, at least 45 to 60 minutes to let myself wake up. Let me vision what my day is going to look like. Let me, you know, I take a little piece of paper and I have a pen and I write down a checklist of things that I would like to accomplish or just reminders. And I see that help me since I was a child. And if you're not a morning person, one thing that you'll start noticing is when you first start doing this, of course, you're not going to wake up the first day feeling excited. It's going to be a challenge because now we have to overcome this subconscious pattern of you sleeping in and you getting comfortable. Uh, you, in that time, when you wake up, you can meditate if that works for you. I find my meditation is more putting music on and envisioning who I'm becoming in my life, what my day is going to look like. And I like to I like to pace back and forth from my kitchen to my office. That just works for me. My body has a lot of emotions. And I find sitting down and meditating, especially with ADHD, can be very challenging for me. I calm my body down and I bring my nervous system back to balance, doing some drinking some tea, some positive music, and uh, writing down my goals for the day. Number five, exercise has been shown to be amazing for those with ADHD. And this is where I came up with something I like to call the high vibe walk. The high vibe walk is going to a neighborhood or going to your favorite park and visioning the person that you're becoming, listening to positive music or a positive podcast or an audio book, or if you don't want nothing, you just want nature, you know, the sound of birds and wind, that's totally fine. And when you walk, I want you to inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth, inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth. And I want you to not be on the phone. Nobody's allowed to call you that's negative. Nobody's allowed to join this walk with you that's negative. No responsibilities on this walk. This walk is purely for you. Sometimes we can feel overwhelmed with low energy trying to go lift weights, especially if you haven't been in a gym in a little while. 
We don't need to do all that to start this off. A simple 60 minute walk will really help. There's an app called Pacer, P-A-C-E-R. As long as you got the phone in your pocket, Pacer will track the amount of steps that you're taking. The real goal is getting to 10,000 steps, but anywhere from like 7,500 to 10,000 is a good goal to start off with. Try to do that for 30 days. As soon as you accomplish that, then you can push yourself to want to go into a gym, but start off super simple. Number six, Dr. Russell Barkley shows that it's very important for a person to support themselves with glucose, which I can totally see why that's important. I have my own opinion. My opinion is it's very important to control your blood sugar. I think what he suggests is, is making sure that you always have a support of like Gatorade next to you or some form of a carbohydrate that can help refuel your SR fuel tank for the simple fact that glucose can feed into the prefrontal cortex and support your conductor system. Um, I see that working and I'm, I'm totally fine with that. For me, I think it's important that my glycemic index is with my carbohydrate choices are pretty low. So I'm not going for a Gatorade. I'll go for an apple instead, but I won't eat the apple alone because I'll find myself feeling good. And then I'll find myself going through like a low blood sugar issue. And that's just me. I'm not, I'm not saying that's you, but I also find this with clients that have trauma and I'm coming across how the nervous system after a long period of time of going through a childhood trauma or high levels of stress can cause issues with hormones not coming back to homeostasis and that's cortisol, adrenaline, and insulin. So I find that my clients that have trauma, including myself, do better if we're careful of trying to overdo glucose by itself or just too much glucose during the day because I find myself have this spurge of energy for about 30 minutes and then I get this real low blood sugar. And since I'm not falling under 70, my blood sugar is not falling under 70, I'm not considered to be hypoglycemic, but there is a, a specific syndrome that can be causing this problem that is unexplained. Research shows like all oh, this low blood sugar dropping can be connected to adrenals, problems, trauma, all these other symptoms. I'm going to be dedicating a podcast to that and a video presentation on YouTube. But I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Glucose control is very important. You don't want to make sure your blood sugar gets too high and you don't want to make sure your blood sugar drops too low. And you could do that by having a very balanced meal. So protein can help stabilize blood sugar but we don't want to go too far with one end of the spectrum. Just a balanced meal can be very well. So if you incorporate these little things throughout your day, you should notice that you have a little more control of your attention, a little more control of compulsiveness, but do not feel guilty of resting and don't feel guilty or ashamed to tell people you need time. You have to learn how to say no sometimes. And if you're trying to do too much and you're putting too much on your plate, you're going to get overwhelmed. And there's only so much where people with ADHD can handle at once. Try your best to start saying no to things that you are you can say no to. And don't worry about trying to be too nice. Don't worry about trying to come you're coming off too wrong. No, you got to put yourself first. It's important. I, you, then we, family and friends, and then all work in the world. A lot of us can be putting we and all instead of I. Then we go home at the end of the day. We're only like 10% of energy left trying to do all the things we want to do for ourselves with 10% of energy. It doesn't work that way. So um, in the next podcast, I'm going to be bringing you through ADHD and trauma. So in the first podcast, my goal was to bring you through understanding ADHD as much as I can. And then now these next couple episodes I'm going to be dropping is connecting other things that can be connected to ADHD. Dr. Russell Barkley believes that ADHD is a genetic gene or a genetic disease that you know, people with ADHD have like myself, but there's other doctors and other practitioners and other studies that showing that it can be caused because of other reasons. And they have different methods on how to treat it. Dr. Barkley believes that ADHD medication is the best option with people with ADHD because it gives out of all these uh, psychiatric diseases or, and mental health problems people have, ADHD medication has been shown to help people with ADHD the most out of all mental health imbalances or chemical imbalances within the brain. That's his belief. And I'm not saying, I'm not picking a side. My goal is to bring you as much awareness as I can and bring you perspectives that I've learned that are interesting. And the next one with trauma, I found a lot of connections and I'm really excited to bring that to you. Hope this podcast helped. If you listen to on Apple, please leave a review, leave some, you know, give me some feedback. I, I really appreciate it. If you watch this on Spotify, let me know your thoughts. And if you're watching this on YouTube, Subscribe if you haven't. You can leave the comments down below and your thoughts. 
Was this helpful? Did you notice throughout this present? I mean, this podcast, there was a couple of steps that, oh, wow, I don't take time. Wow. You know what? I don't even meditate. I don't even exercise. If there's a little bit of things, let me know what you were missing down below or what has helped you the most with ADHD and helping your symptoms. Hope this podcast helps and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.